Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer and welcome to your 22nd Microsoft Visual C Sharp tutorial. Now, if you haven't noticed already, you can see that I'm using Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate. Now I got this through my school and so far I'm really liking it a lot more than the Express versions of um, let's say C Sharp or Visual Basic. Um, it's got a lot more features in it. Um, one of my favorite ones is the, let's see here, a well, whatever, I forgot what it's called. But basically, you can set up a server and you can have more than one person working on a project at the same time. Um, so that really helps with uh, working with multiple people on a project. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to create a new project. Ah, here it is. It's a team foundation server. It was right in front of me the whole time. So we're going to create a new project and we will just name it Message Boxes. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to be getting input from message boxes. Now not necessarily what the person types in, but what they click and what their answer is, such as OK, or Yes, or No, or Cancel, or Retry. Um, just whatever they uh, type in. So here's our Form 1. Now let's go ahead and resize it, and we'll add some stuff to it. So we'll add a text box. And let's go ahead and just copy that and we'll paste it a couple times. Okay, so now let's add a couple labels. So we'll set label 1 to plus and we'll set, we'll copy that, we'll paste it and we'll set that one to equals. So we're just setting up a little calculator here and we're going to ask the user what they want to do when they click solve. Now this is um, kind of a not very useful but it's showing you guys the concept of what you can do with getting the input from whatever the user clicks. So let's go ahead and add one more control. We'll add a button. Okay, so we'll set the text for button 1 to solve, and let's go ahead and rename it because you always want to rename your controls so that they are easy to remember. So we've got button solve. I'll change this text box name to text num1. This one will be text num2. And we'll set this one to text answer. Okay, so now that we've created our window, let's go ahead and look at the code for the solve event, or whenever the person clicks solve, uh, we'll look at the code that's going to run when they do that. So let me just make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, you can see here I have private void button solve click. So whenever they click it, let's make it do something. So we're just going to use a simple if statement. Now this if statement is going to get the output of what they have clicked. So let's go ahead and just type message box dot show and we'll say are you sure you want to well, not, let's do run this operation and we'll just set the title to question and now let's go ahead and set the buttons so message box buttons dot and you can see here we have uh, a let's see this might be a property or an enumeration I can't really remember but we have abort retry ignore ok ok cancel retry cancel yes no and yes no cancel so let's just go ahead and set ours to ok cancel now let's set the icon so we'll just use message box icon dot question. And now we need to close the parentheses. And since we're using an if statement, we need to compare this to something. So we have if message box dot show and then all of our parameters equals something. So what we need to do is we need to type system dot windows dot forms dot dialog result now you can see it's an enumeration and it specifies identifiers to indicate the return of a value so basically whatever they click 
um, it's going to perform an operation based on their result. So we'll just type dialog result dot and you can see here it gives us another enumeration which has a bunch of options. We've got abort, cancel, ignore, no, none, OK, retry, and yes. Now if you remember we used OK and cancel. So we're only going to need two different if statements or we'll just use an if and an else if. So if they click OK then let's go ahead and put some code in here so that it will run and it will give us an answer. So we'll just type text ants dot text is equal to and now we're going to need, need to do is add the two numbers that they typed in. So we'll just type convert dot to int and we're just going to use an int 32. Now it's a 32-bit um, integer which is just a basically a normal int. It's not a long and it's not a short. So 2 int 32 and inside here we need to specify our variable. So we're going to be using a string value right there. You can use the arrow up and down keys to scroll through your different options. So for our string we're going to use text num1 dot text. And then for the next one we're going to use convert dot two and 32 again and we will do text num2. And you can see here that it's giving us an error. It says cannot implicitly convert type int to string. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert this integer back into a string. Now this might be confusing for you guys at first but just look over the code a couple times and do it yourself and you'll start to understand uh, what it does. So we need to take our answer and we'll just go ahead and close it in parentheses. And we're going to convert that to a string. So we'll type convert dot to string. And we don't need that there. So what it's doing is setting text, text answer dot text to the string value of text num1 plus text num2. Num and since those are both strings, it needs to convert those to integers first, add them, and convert them back to a string. Okay, so let's just go ahead and leave out the else if statement because if they click cancel, it's not going to do anything. So we don't need any code in there. So let's go back here and run this and see what kind of output we get. So we'll set this one to 32 and this one to 32 again. And if we click solve, it says, are you sure you want to run this operation? And if we click OK, looks like we got an error here. Ah, here it is. We put the actual text box object instead of the text inside of it. Now by using textnum2.text, it's just getting the text that the user has put in there. So let's go ahead and rerun that and we will get a uh, the right output this time. So here's our window 32 plus 32 click solve it'll sh say are you sure you want to run this operation if we click OK it says 64. Now let's go ahead and delete all of this and you can add in code that will automatically um, erase these values um, after they're done or you can add in uh, properties of the text box that will make this one uh, uneditable so that they can't change the answer. So we'll go ahead and click solve and it'll say are you sure you want to run this operation and if we click cancel nothing happens and I'll do that with some numbers just so you guys can see. Solve and cancel. You can see nothing happens. So go ahead look at this code. Uh, I highly recommend you uh, type it out yourself, maybe make some changes so you can actually see what's going on. Um, you learn a lot better when you actually do it instead of just watching the video. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.